it's wonderful to see you all for general thinking on the streets of Barangaroo. Yes, my name's Spinella Kernabo and I'm pretty stoked to be back for this event. It is Australia. I love you. Australia, I love you, but it's a conversation that we have to have. And as you can see here, we've got seven fantastic performers and speakers, all from different backgrounds, and they're going to tell you their story. They're going to read you their letter about Australia. Um, but I'll fill you in with a bit more information about that uh, in just a moment. Um, General Thinking, of course, is presenting these events. It's curated. It is uh, an organisation. It's kind of like an organisation. It organi it's like this group, this kind of international Australian group of people who just want to come together and think and to be creative and to engage and to exchange ideas. That's what general thinking is all about. And it's really awesome to see you all here on this sunny night, as I said. Um, and the program that we're doing here, general thinking on the streets of Barangadu, Barangaroo, <laughs> Barangadu, Barangaroo, for sure. Uh, it's a bit of a smackdown program throughout the year. So there's lots of comedy, there's lots of performances, there's debates, you name it. It's a bit of a bit of a, an S. I've got to try not to swear. There is a bit of swearing tonight, so I'm going to try not to do it. But there's a really, really hot stuff that's happening throughout the year. And before I tell you about what's going on tonight, hi guys, how are you? Yeah. Uh, round of applause for our presenters tonight while we're here. It's awesome to have you here. I'll introduce you all in just a moment. But um, the next general thinking on the streets of Barangaroo is happening in February. Are there any single blokes in the audience? <laughs> I've got someone, but look, yeah, just kidding. Um, the next event is speed dating, and apparently there are some tickets available for the next one, which is called uh, blah, 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 Love on the Street. So if you're a single male... That's happening in February, get some tickets. And the one that's happening in March, if you're interested in startup culture, is pretty awesome as well. Uh, and all the information you can find at onthestreetsofbarangaroo.com. If you're on the social media, the Instagram hashtag is onthestreetsofbarangaroo. Get onto Twitter, get onto Facebook, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you need to go to the toilet, quick bit of housekeeping, you have to cross the uh, downfall of rain safely and go down there and you'll find your way to the loo. And if there happens to be a bit of an emergency, uh, then we also have to cross over to Hickson Road and uh, find your way up to Barangaroo Reserve. Okay. Are you ready for tonight? Yeah. I want to hear it again. Are you ready for tonight? Yeah. Who loves Australia? Yeah. But. Okay. That's what I want to hear. Look, as I said, general thinking on the streets of Barangaroo, it's, you know, we've had lots of comedy, we've got debates, we've got performances. All of these things happen in this very space, but we can also get serious. And bloody hell, we should get serious. Where the hell, bloody hell are you, Australia? <laughs> oh no, I wasn't going to do that one. <laughs> it's about asking really big, important questions, and we need to be able to ask some of these tough questions. We have to, because this is our country. We need to be able to have this conversation, a continuing conversation about who we are, as a people and who we want to be. And that is what tonight is all about. Australia Day is around the corner. Who takes the day off on Australia Day? Really? Okay, well, anyway. For a lot of people, it's a celebration. For a lot of people, it isn't. For a lot of folk, it's about taking a day off. It's about having a barbecue. It's about raising the Australian flag and, you know, inviting your friends over, listening to the hottest 100. But, you know, if you dig underneath the skin, as we well know, Australia has a lot of stuff to ask itself. Uh, it's a pretty relatively young nation, and, you know, if you get underneath there, things can be a bit awkward, can be a bit difficult, like when you meet your ex-girlfriend on the street. <laughs> She's there with her girlfriend, you know. That's weird, okay? It's a little bit awkward, stuff like that. Um, it is just like that. <laughs> Who's had that experience? Who's met an ex on the street when you didn't expect it? Sucks. It's a bit awkward, and I think Australia can kind of, you know, be a little bit like that. We haven't quite got it all worked out. We're a young country. Um, we don't quite know exactly who we are as a nation. We're still learning, and what it means to be as, a, as a, an Australian, I suppose, is not the same for everybody. I know that that's a bit simple, and that's okay. It's good to remember. It's good to have some perspective that not everybody sees our country, who we are, exactly the same, and that is exactly what we're talking about tonight. How can we ask those questions of ourselves, how can we move this conversation forward and how can we continue to have this absolutely important conversation. I truly believe in this. Um, we need to listen, we need to reflect and we need to engage and these amazing, amazing people tonight are going to be giving us some really brilliant, some really sterling and some really important ideas to think about who we are. So yes, it's a tough conversation. Are you ready for a tough conversation? Yes? I want to hear that again. Are you ready for a really tough conversation? Yes. I love you. I really, really love you. But 
just kidding, just kidding. Um, and, I, and I just wanted to repeat what Clarence said. It's wonderful to be able to do this in this location, to have this brave and important chat about who we are as Australians at this really amazing venue. I thank you all for coming out tonight. It's really, really splendid to see you all here. Um, as I said, seven speakers, all from various cultural backgrounds. They're going to be giving us their love letters, their meditation on what it means to be an Australian and what Australia means to them all the love and all, all the adoration, but also all the heartache and all the shame will, will come through tonight. And it's a conversation about our national identity, which I think is absolutely important. Um, oh yeah, a language warning, my friends. If, well look, let's face it, language might get a bit fruity, a bit like a pavlova on Australia Day, okay? So it's a bit fruity on the top, you've got the cream in the middle and then you get all the good stuff at the bottom and you eat it all up. So we're going to be doing that tonight, so be warned, there will be some fruity language, um, but I love this stuff because it's a challenge to us, our way of thinking and who we are. Enough from me, Australia, I love you, but let's get into it. I'm going to introduce each of the speakers as we go through, but let's start first with none other than a gentleman who is part of Horror Show, that's his band. He was telling me earlier that he has about 16 monikers, 16 pseudonyms, but the one that we're talking to tonight is Solo. Would you please welcome Solo? Uh, yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, it's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to be part of this conversation with all these guys. It is an awkward time of year just around the corner. Um, I think we've got a lot to think about and, you know, important things to think about when we're on this land, especially. Um, and with that in mind, I'm going to perform a little something for you. Tension simmers from the white hot heat of the cold hard truth that I never heard up in no classroom coming to understand that I got blood on my hands, the cost of living in this sunburnt land. From the sands of the coast to the bush, we advanced as we came and we pushed as they pulled, so we took and what we gave in exchange, plague, disease and poison in the bottle. No question blood stains the wattle. Was it like a game of hide and seek, stalking through the bush silently? Cause society told him to do it quietly. From the apple aisle to mile creek, gun barrels rang out, and put an end to what might have been. Genocide, lies, deceit, rape and massacre. Systematic assassination of character. Acts of depravity, disguised as charity. All in the name of civilizing humanity. Children snatched away from their families. Pain resonates, leaving untold casualties. Protection boards and half cast. The truth is the flag ought to fly at half mast. It's a dark past buried in our own backyard. Still I can't stand the thought that it's all too hard. Or the heartless catch cry that it's all in the past. Yo, that sounds like a coward's remarks. This is happening right now. Out back third world conditions that never seem to make it to our televisions. Screens too congested with the rhetoric of politicians. Grandiose claims about Australian traditions. Inquiries and royal commissions that are yet to follow through to a conviction. Loyal subjects protected by the system. Too many dying in our prisons. Like a Palm Island man left lying on a cold cell floor. While the people look for justice in a makeshift court. And the response just stops short of martial law with the riot squad kicking down doors. I remember at 15, walking through the block feeling nervous. Because my whole life I'd heard that it was risky. The racist in me. What a crock of shit. I stopped to think the opposite when the streets burned for TJ Hickey. Now what's the use in that? Cops roll past in red, white and blue of the Union Jack. Subtle oppression, bubbling menace. Maintain a presence, make the population feel threatened. Now fate beckons. Hear the echoes as the pain resonates. Devastation. Every January 26, I'm torn between wanting to celebrate and hang my head in shame. Australia, I love you, but there's got to be a better way. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Our first. Thank you. Absolutely a fantastic way to kick off tonight's Australia, I love you, but are you, are you pumped? It's yeah. good, isn't it? Okay. I'm really, really thrilled to invite our next performer, speaker, 
the absolutely wonderful Amrita uh, Heppi, who is an emerging independent uh, choreographer, performance artist. Everything is good. Amrita, come on up. Yama, or Kia ora, or welcome, Australia. I love you. You're a harsh beast. You're a bloody spectacle of a beauty. And when you turn it on, everyone feels it. <laughs> that was me. Your heat pulses with its own circadian theme song. And you know those spaces that we go to where it feels like it's the first time again where you make me feel like I'm finding you. Those total moments of alone, you know, lost almost. You're remote like that, an island in fact. And how you change, but you still have the ability to feel small town. Your accent drives me up the wall, the A's and the A's, but it endears me to you all the same. The fact that you made a huge banana and some gold hot pants iconic. You're, you're funny. You're a riot, in fact. How when I'm looking at you and who surrounds you, who circles you, the people, the wildlife, they're vibrant, they're dangerous. <laughs> There's a sense of toughness, but ultimately intrigue to those who circle you. You're best when wet. <laughs> For all the heat, you know how to cool down, how to have a good time with your generous coastlines. When I was walking home from the beach the other day, you made me feel safe and free in my cosy. The sun that beats down on my shoulders, that weight. And we laughed about the fact that you could be giving me cancer, but you said, toughen up, princess. The ridges of your broad deserts, the ripples of that darling harbour, the bays and the enclaves that just get better and better as we get deeper and deeper, spanning east to west. And when I leave you, I think about that space, that sense of abandonment that's always nourished me. But here's the thing, babe, just because you're hot, like literally one of the hottest, you're good looking, it doesn't excuse the fact that you've got an attitude problem. You're a bad friend. You're a shitty lover. You're a terrible parent, a racist, a sexist, a rapist, and every other ist that isn't just. I get embarrassed when I'm away from you because people know about your violent history towards me. They know about maybe, or not even know about your lack of history. And I get it. You're insecure about your sense of national identity. But come on, babe, we've made artworks about this. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> I'm ashamed of how little responsibility you take for your actions. But then you think you can cover it up with an egalitarian, she'll be right. Who is she? And how do you get right? I despise how little you think of people who are different to you. The censorship that's gone into building over misdemeanors, how you've chosen to educate yourself and yours and cut out my mother's tongue and then when she tried to speak said you couldn't understand. And then the former Labour MP, Gary Johns, your mate, he actually um, represented you for a while. He called me and my sisters, Indigenous sisters, uh, for want of a better word, actually no, this is his uh, direct phrasing, cash cows. I am not sucking at your teat. I am not asking for anything other than what was mine, what could be ours, if you learnt how not to snatch. I'm ashamed of what you've done and how you aren't prepared to make it right, but instead you've made it white, at how you've built yourself over me in every speakable way as a woman, as a woman of colour, as queer, as other. And putting on a party for Mardi Gras is not enough, babe. I want equality and recognition of love for all of my brothers and sisters. And your concern, your deep, 
insidious concern. Last year, I had this real concern sweep me, followed by a shame and a depression that I took on your failings when I heard of the way that you treated those, and I know we've heard this before, who've come across the sea, mostly by boat. Do you remember that girl? That 11-year-old girl from Iran? whose religion was deemed unclean, who was so deeply distressed that the bathroom that was 50 meters away from her was too much, and it was that, and she laid in it over and over again, who was so deeply suffering that she was moved from one asylum to another, who was so deeply suffering that this 11-year-old girl tried and tried and tried and failed to hang herself from her own bedsheet. Her parents, they ran into the cell, to find her strangling, and they take her down. She is then later taken to a hospital, accompanied by not one, not two, but three ACM guards. Her mother not there. Just in case the prisoner tried to escape, just in case the 11-year-old girl who tried to kill herself tried to escape. How do you treat your children? How do you love your children? How do you treat others' children? How scared are you of compromising your own precious, bloody sovereignty? And before you give me that excuse, you know, the baby, it's just the Western world. It's the patriarchy, the way it is. This has really got to change. You're responsible, babe. Come on. Why are you spinning me this story? And look, <clears throat> we haven't had a chance really to speak openly about this. I know you've spoken about it, I've tried to smooth it out behind my back. I know we've had councils and councillors, a parliament mediate this. But for real, you hurt those that came before me. You fucking traumatised those who I came from. And I stand before you through it all, and I love you. I carry it all in my blood because I have a history, because we have a history. And I fought. I fought for us, for me, but for us. And I can feel you shuffling and unsure about the things that I'm asking you or that I'm telling you. So I'm asking for space and respect and a cultivation of trust. Let me show you what I do know, because I'm really starting to believe you <clears throat> when you tell me that you're ready to listen. It's sad you've had a history of oppressing a lot of things that make you so vibrant. The great thing is you don't have to do that anymore. You never had to. And I believe you can change I need you to change. I demand that you change. Because Australia, you've broken my heart because all I ever asked was for you to love me, was for you to love me back and black and near and far and as much as I love you. So shit out, babe. I know you're worth the trouble and we'll get through it together. I think we can do another one, another round of applause for Amita Hepri. Amazing. I like that, Amrita. Short your shit out, babe. <laughs> Perfect way to wrap it up. Okay, here we are. Australia, I love you, but our next poet speaker is a spoken word artist. In fact, he's an English teacher by day. By night, he's a spoken word artist, and he also runs the Parramatta um, uh, Poetry Slam. Is that right? Yep. His name is Trey Wong. Huge round of applause. Please make him welcome. I'm going to do a spoken word piece that I wrote about uh, my own experience as an Asian Australian male. Um, so it goes like this. Australia, I love myself today, but the battle was hard won. I'm the sum of our history, dissociated from the soil that bred me and second tier in your racial hierarchy. I, mongrel son, 
tango of two cultures, boy who ran cross country only to fling himself out of his own body. Australia, I love you, but you don't love me. Australia, when the first Chinese came to you in the gold rush of the 1850s, you named them sojourners, transient temporary ghosts upon this strange red earth, divided their worth by the length of their difference and branded them second class non-citizens, as if your begrudging approval was a consolation prize to be proud of. Australia, we have only ever been unwelcome guests on your doorstep. And yet, you crafted your identity against mine, used the fear of my race to worry your states to federation, drained my sweat for your cement and bent and broke me over easy. You built your nationhood on the concrete of my body, ground my bones to make your white bread, named me yellow, then painted me immoral foreigner foil red to your milky-skinned normality. First, we were the opium-smoking, kink-eyed, opposite oriental enemy, but now we are work-addicted tall poppies, buck-toothed, unwaterproof, malignant minority, sowing seeds of non homogeneity amidst your newly native sons and yellow imperiled daughters. We, Banksia robbers. We, uneconomic refugees. We morbid migratory beasts planted only knee-deep in this nation of thieves. So, Australia, I love you, but it's pretty clear to see that you only love me as far as you can abuse me, exclude me, and deny my subjectivity, but today, Australia, I give myself permission to speak. Today, I unburden my speech and I catapult truth bombs and beauty into this sea of faces. I flame fury over earth and I fire volleys of verse to rust ravenous my chains. Today, I declare a plague on all salt bite and scatterbrain. I conjure up a hurricane of hexes in my oppressor's tongue, and I drink up all white supremacy and give birth now to the sun. So Australia, witness how I weave this poetry with the needle of myself, how I harrow heartbeats into your cornerstones and conduct them to cacophony. Watch as I eviscerate the sky in one fell swipe and rain dance in the rapture that bleeds down on us. See me as I shower free and manic until every racial slur you wrote on my skin melts away and all your cameras cower in the lightning flash of my self-representation. Thus I enact my own salvation. Thus I declare my own deliverance. Thus this tango is my war dance, this battle my biography, and my skin a shade of tan whose name evades all the limitations of your language. Today, I have reassembled every piece of me that I could salvage, and I refuse to come undone. Australia, I love myself today, but the battle was hard won. Thank you, Trey. Thank you, Trey Wong. Uh, incredible. This battle is my biography. Amazing, amazing. Okay, we are four speakers in here at Australia. I love you, but here it's Rangaroo, the streets of Rangaroo, and it is uh, now my... I love this lady. Her name is Candy Bowers. I've been watching her on stage since the dawn of time. <laughs> and I'm older than you, so let's face it. <laughs> she's a performer, she's an activist, she's a comedian, she's great. Would you please welcome Candy Bowers? Dear Australia, I love you, but... You've been a really shit foster parent. I thought I'd just lay that out flat, you know, like that. It's like I practiced in therapy. You're not my real dad, but you're my family. So here's what I need you to know. A sister with a fat booty finds it difficult to grow up in a place where beauty is based on blonde hair and white skin, where long skinny legs are the thing and flat board-like bums awkwardly swing. That's not to say that there's anything wrong with those kind of butts, but <laughs> what about the rest of us? You know, in high school, home and away beach babes haunted my dreams. That's what you let me watch on TV? And then you brought me that subscription, so I wanted to look like those Caucasian freckled nymphettes on the cover of Dolly magazine. <laughs> Every single part of me is opposite to that. Dad, my adolescent subconscious did the maths. 
Australia, you set me up. I'm talking about a consistent attack on my body image and self-esteem. How's a 13-year-old brown girl meant to grow and identify when she can't visualize or see her self-reflected booty, hips and thighs? How can she feel comfortable when she doesn't even fit into jeans at Sports Girl or Surf Dive and Ski C? Like her mama and her mama's mama and her mama's mama before in a large part of her community, that little brown girl had a naturally fat booty. And frankly, your restrictive fashion, the white out on the television and your Anglo-European obsession in the magazines impacted on her love for all that out back. So fuck you, Dad. I'm not interested. <laughs> I'm not interested in hugging it out or waiting for you to get it. This round, brown woman grew up feeling like her body was wrong and the pants were right. No matter how sweet or how soft, I had to fight to be me, let alone feel like a beauty. It was like you wanted me to feel ugly and therefore worthless which is a whole other letter about your bullshit Australian misogyny, because from Australian parliament to Australian hip-hop to Australian film to Australian media to boardrooms across this country, we are nowhere near gender equality. But let's stick to this particular ish, shall we? You'd like to call yourself the lucky country, Dad. And yet I had to excavate and travel through mazes and break through walls to find guides to keep me from drowning in this sea of toxicity that you built around me. Lucky for India Ari, lucky for Moni Love, Queen Latifah, Salt and Pepper and TLC, lucky for Alice Walker, Aretha, Angela, Josephine, Lebo, En Vogue, Adiva, Estelle, Maya and Susan Laurie, lucky for Titus, lucky for Lou Bennett, man, Ujuru, Trudy Aspling and the Killer Queens. Shit, lucky for Sister She and every sister who took to that stage despite all the obstacles you put in her way. Reparenting myself was tough. Like any sort of domestic violence, the rebuild is plagued with self-doubt, confusion, the back and forth, I love you, I love you, I don't love you, what the fuck? So, Dad, you oppressive, dangerous, soul-destroying man. I'm trying to separate myself to detach from the negative attachment where my identity is tangled with your identity and I feel like a visitor in my own family and I can't stand people who celebrate the day, the day you invaded and stole this whole country and I feel sorry for those trying to reconcile with you because you might have said sorry but what's sorry without accountability and I can't feel comfortable anywhere and I don't know why I'm telling you because you're not listening and you don't care. Like anyone who ever writes a letter to a grade A abusive a-hole it's always more for themselves than the reader. The words themselves are the healer. Yeah, you taught me pain. I understand that strain of being female and curvaceous with a body made for touching and a booty most bodacious. With great booty comes great responsibility. And my evolution is in full flight. Lucky for public enemy. Don't believe the hype. What? Don't believe the hype. Oh. To all those little brown girls still growing up invisible, still seeking your reflection. I see you. Do you see me? My triumphs will change you more than my hurts. Little sisters, don't believe the hype. For you are my words. Time louder for Candy Bowers. And let's keep it going because we now have our next performers, uh, Sarah and Iman. So, ladies and gentlemen, here on the streets of Barangaroo, Australia, I love you, but I love you, Australia, but, 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 but. <laughs> Lots of butts, going to keep saying it. Um, our next um, speakers tonight are Asara Saleh, who's committed to furthering human rights and literacy among the re re uh, refugee community, an advocate for social justice from the Australian Muslim community. Welcome to you. And also Iman Etri, who is a student at WSU. Yes, very good. Majoring in history, political thought. She's recently joined the world of spoken word poetry. Huge, huge, massive, supportive, huge round of applause, please, for Sarah and Iman. Thank you. Just want to say, Candy, 
a girl after my own heart, damn. <laughs> Uh, so we're tag teaming it today, and you might have noticed that we were clicking a little mm -hmm. earlier before. It's not something that we just do randomly. Um, it's something us uh, spoken word poets <laughs> like to hear. So if you hear something you you hear something you like, and you want to show us some appreciation rather than clicking, I'd really uh, rather than clapping, I'd really like to hear the clicks. Want to practice that? Mm. And the mmm, I like that too. So <laughs> it's not creepy. <laughs> oh. You're good. You're good to go. All right. I love you, Australia. But you need to stop. You need to stop pressuring me, stop pigeonholing me, stop labeling me. I am not your moderate or liberal or conservative or fundamentalist or extreme or radical. Stop orientalizing me, inadvertently legitimizing stereotypes. Stop putting the onus on me to plead not guilty. Stop otherizing me. Stop exotifying me, eroticizing me. I am not a Halloween costume. I'm not here for you to find me beautiful, desirable, for me to make you feel comfortable. Stop defining me. Stop speaking at me, about me, for me. It's not up to me to prove my humanity. Stop trying to translate me. Stop bleach creaming me into your standard of perfection. Stop mispronouncing my name, Sarah. <laughs> Telling me to behave. Stop calling me angry, dismissing the anger as if I don't have a right to be. Stop projecting your insecurities onto desperate people seeking survival as if they're a threat to your way of life. Do not reverse anything, me. Stop telling me you don't see color as though we're invisible. Stop calling for whiteness studies or man studies at already whitewashed universities. Stop giving out grants for people to fix me. You arrived here shipwrecked, yet like pilgrims. You continue to take and take and take and take over to gentrify and occupy and colonize today. Stop letting woolies take over your goddamn holidays. Stop dispossessing me, hyphenating me, erasing my memories, unwriting history. Stop soaking our cultures in violence. Stop warring with me from the bedroom to the battlefield. Stop objectifying me. All our priests, philosophers, and politicians are male, while the majority of those subjected to nudity to slavery are female. Stop undressing me, glass housing me, gender pay gapping me. I don't want a seat at the table. I want to break the damn table. Stop color shaming, Slut -shaming. fat shaming, shaming, tall shaming, age shaming, sex worker shaming. Did you forget your half woman? You will not find your revolution in between our legs. I march the streets for my right to speak. I leave pieces of myself in pavements, a witness to Victor's history. See, language can imprison, but it can also free. I was left on the doorsteps of civil war, homeless, but words are my homecoming. They didn't know bullets could trigger tongues, and with each poem I write, I breathe a new life. See, I write for myself, to own myself, for self-preservation, a declaration of political warfare, so stop putting me on trial. I'm the judge, the, the, the defendant, the prosecutor, the jury, and the judge all at once. I'm not a debt to pay an apology to make, a set of instructions, or one version of your reality. So stand with me. Do not make the universe a single story. And we're important enough to be spoken about, but never spoken to see them out to eliminate me, obliterate me. One wrong move is my funeral, commemorate me. Don't desecrate my memory talking about being here to liberate me, please. Break me free from this chain of oppression. This depression, I confess, I'm feeling the aggression. Your inflated ego wants to let me go as if I were a cage bird singing some damsel in distress. I crave release, yes, but not for my religion. I crave to be set free from this vile condition where you're the norm that I'm expected to conform to. Constantly amazed at how your choice of clothing is an artistic expression, but mine spell repression, possession, sometimes potential weapon. This is what a feminist looks like. The words are printed across the front of the top. Nowhere between do not dry clean and warm wash only does a tag say made in sweatshop. And I'm sorry to pop your bubble of feminist bliss. But if you're going to advocate for equal rights, here's a handy tip. Don't support the exploitation of women you supposedly stand with. See, Australia, I love you. But here's the thing. Our actions have consequences. Like 
Some of us decide to go out drinking on a Sunday night when we know we have work in six hours, and others decide to build a nation on the bones of the indigenous owners of the land and then pretend it never happened. What can I say? Some of us make really big mistakes. Some of us don't think about the price that was paid, and some of us should. And it's all well and good to say that it's in the past, that we've changed, that we're different today. But we're like a game show pinwheel, spin and target the minority of the day. Australia, I love you, but if I hear one more person complain about the fact that Vegemite is halal, I might actually cry. <laughs> Being randomly selected at the airport is only funny the first time. And they wonder why I can't stay quiet, why I can't brave the silence. Mama says, watch yourself around people who pick up more than they can hold. We are decorations to be bought and sold. Commodities on board the flavor bus. Love our food, our color, our clothes, but discard us. Or else we're just waiting to be saved. Cultures, religions, homes of the depraved. We are not lesser, not other, not oppressed. And despite your blatant show of disrespect, you'll still find me by your side. Fist and voice, both raised high, fighting for your right to happiness and mine because I choose happiness. From a young age, I witness what happens when people choose rage, when they let control run free like letting a dog off a leash. I saw eyes popping and hearts thrumming. I saw families torn apart. I choose happiness because my grandfather doesn't remember me. And if you can forget what's important, then why spend now focusing on what's shitty? I choose happiness because they told me I couldn't because they said take one pill a day and I'm not here to debate chemical imbalance because Lord knows there are days I wake up and wish that I hadn't. But one night I went outside to empty myself of sadness. When I stared at the sky, there were only clouds in sight, laughed until I started to cry, asked God why. And when I looked up, the clouds had parted and a single star winked back at me. How then could I say no to being happy? So Australia, I choose happiness. I choose dancing in my boxes when everyone is sleeping. My favorite song starts with whistling and you should see me around a packet of jelly beans. This year had been the worst of my life until I attended my first poetry night. And if life can change in a single instant, then who am I to choose resistance? So Australia, I choose happiness. We choose happiness. We write for ourselves, to own ourselves, for self-preservation, a declaration of political warfare. We are not a debt to pay, an apology to make, a set of instructions, one version of a reality, so stand with us. Do not make our world a single story. Thank you. Okay. Big one for Sarah Saleh and Imam Netri. Amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, before we stop clapping them, maybe we could all click them. That was extraordinary. Thank you. Wow, this is amazing. I'm really lucky to be here. I don't know about you. Are you guys lucky to be here? How lucky are we? This is amazing. And to be doing it right here with the rain. It's perfect. Okay, our final speaker tonight, if I can use my formal language. He's not very well known. He hasn't performed much at all. He's got <laughs> zero experience, so he needs a lot of support. His name is El Fresh the Lion. Welcome him. Dear Australia, I hope this letter finds you well. I've been trying to reach you for some time, but I don't think my words have ever found you. I never heard back from you, and that's okay. I understand that you're busy, but I can't help but be concerned. Let me explain. See, I'm a fan. I've been a fan since day one. I was born and raised in southwest Sydney, in the city of Liverpool, and since then I've enjoyed a lot of what you've had to offer. As a child, I loved your sporting culture. I thrived on the field of play. I learned a lot about the values of leadership, hard work, sacrifice, Good sportsmanship and fairness, communication and teamwork. I discovered countless possibilities in your public education system. It was there that I built the skills and knowledge I needed to study law and humanities at university. It was also in school that I found a home in music, where you showed me the values of innovation, creativity, and persistence. Since then, I've seen many of your cities. I've met many of your peoples. I'm grateful for where I am now. I'm appreciative of the opportunities, but they didn't come without hardship. The constant questioning of my identity, the ignorance and racism, led me to question the values of belonging, equality, and welcome. It made me question whether you cared about me. It made me question myself. So as I grew older, I dug deep. 
I tried to understand you by turning to your diverse communities, by reading into your history, by observing your behavior and making connections between all that was clear and all that was buried beneath the surface. I learned that you were far from the simple Australia I thought I knew you, that I thought I knew so well as a child. Instead, you're a complex being, one that has a lot to account for and one that still has a lot to figure out. Australia, see, I love you, but I've grown tired of telling people that you have a long way to go. January 26 comes around every year and we're all invited to celebrate, but I can't celebrate. I don't know what you stand for. I don't know what you represent. You've put forward the idea of recognizing indigenous peoples, but you don't want to recognize the uncomfortable reality that for some, Australia Day is Invasion Day or Survival Day. The values that you taught me as a child conflict with your present day actions, particularly where treating people in need of your help is concerned. I find it hard to even consider celebrating when you fail to address the greatest issues of our time with those values in mind. From people seeking asylum to challenges faced by indigenous communities from climate change to violence against women. I've been looking for you to lead, but you tend to defer every time. So as a concerned fan, I want to make some suggestions. I care about you, and I, want, and I know what you're capable of. I want, you to, I want to see you become a country with a conscience, one that puts its values first and doesn't deviate from them when your peers are acting in conflict with them. Here are some values I believe you can represent. Number one, welcome. Knowing that your strength as a nation lies in your diversity. You are home to people of all walks of life, and we enjoy a richness when we value everybody's contributions. You're diverse not just in terms of cultures, but also in terms of ideas. And by embracing them, your potential for growth is limitless. Number two, healing. Particularly in relation to First Nations, indigenous peoples. Acknowledging the runs of your past, and not being consciously or subconsciously blind to the uncomfortable truths knowing that you cannot fully move forward without moving together with all of your peoples living equally side by side. Number three, innovation. Outside of the obvious of supporting innovation in science and technology, but thinking creatively where solving some of the world's greatest challenges are concerned. Take climate change or poverty, for example. Number four, compassion. Particularly for those who are in need of your support and assistance. There are many who come knocking on your doorstep requesting your help. Instead of turning them away, treating them harshly and inhumanely, treat them with common decency. Be open to their suffering and their desire to be safe and free. Number five, understanding. So that we may live in a spirit of wanting to understand each other by listening, respecting, and valuing others. Number six, teamwork knowing that nothing is achieved by individuals alone and that we must work together for the betterment of all. These values are starting points. May the suggestion of them open up a discussion around which values you stand for. Once you've realized them, act in accordance with them and create incentives so that all those who follow you will want to act in accordance with them too. I believe in you. I believe in your capacity to be a nation with a conscience, a caring one, and one that leads with its, with its values in mind, knowing that you have a responsibility not just to all of your peoples, but to the global community too. Until then, I'll continue to travel your lands, meeting many, meeting many more of your peoples, and visiting many more of your cities, building with all those who want to see you shine too. I hope to hear from you soon. Yours truthfully, a concerned fan. Thank you. I want that list of values printed out and handed to every single politician and every human being here in this country. I think it's fantastic. One more round of applause for El Fresh the Lion. Thank you. Um, what an incredible set of performances, conversations, eye-opening ideas. These guys have 
I don't, I, for me, I've really, I mean, I've learned so much. Uh, I feel like, you know how you think you know so much and then you come along and suddenly your eyes are opened and you go, I know nothing. And all we have to do is come and attend events like this and listen and engage and learn. So I thank you guys for, for your time. You're fantastic. Another round of applause. I love them. Um, I want to say everybody's names. Nick Solo, Amrit Happy, Troy Wong, Candy Bowers, Sarah Sala, Imran Etri, El Fresh the Lion. You guys are fantastic once again. You guys are great. Um, so it wasn't so bad coming out tonight to have this tough, important conversation about our Australian identity, was it? Did it suck or was it really amazing? Really good. Congratulations to you for braving the weather. It's been wonderful. Um, the, these conversations, general thinking on the streets of Barangaroo, they happen every single month and they can be serious like tonight. They can be the performances. They can be the debates. They can be everything. If you want to find out more information, the website's pretty good looking too. Uh, it's on the streets of Barangaroo. Next month, we're talking about Australian identity. Next month, it's about speed dating. You know, the month after that, it's about startup culture. This is, this is the place to be. So if you're a social media type person, person <laughs> half a glass of wine, tragic. <laughs> anyway, if you're into social media, use the hashtag on the streets of Barangaroo. Please share these guys, their, their, their handles, the whole thing. They're absolutely awesome. The videos will be up online. You'll be able to find all the links as well. Uh, do come back. Tell your friends. My name's Fenella Kernerbone. Thank you again to uh, Barangaroo for, for putting this on tonight in the weather. Thanks to these guys for their awesome help uh, who filmed and done all the sound as well. Congratulations. Thank you. And that's it. I'll see you next time for General Thinking. Thanks, guys. Bye.